Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. And now I'm question number two from the October 2021 International A-Level Pure Mathematics P1 paper. And this question here is about differentiation. It tells us a curve has equation y equals 3x to the power of 5 plus 4x cubed minus x plus 5. The points P and Q lie on the curve. The gradient of the curve at both point P and Q is 2. Find the x coordinates of P and Q. Okay, so what we need to do here is we need to find the gradient function of this and we need to equate that to 2 because the gradient of this curve is equal to 2 um, at those two points. So if we find dy dx and equate that to 2, we will then find the x values of the points p and q now it says find the x coordinates of p and q it doesn't say find the coordinates of p and q so you need to read the question very carefully because a lot of students would waste time by finding the what x and y coordinates of p and q and um, you know unnecessarily waste time you have a limited time in these papers and it is quite tight um we've seen the last few years so it's best for you to make sure you read the question very carefully in order that you save time um, you know, and not do things which are not being asked for. So here they asked you to find um, the gradient of the curve at um, basically the gradient of this function. So we've got to find dy dx. So it looks like everything is ready for, for differentiation. There's nothing, there are no modifications needed. All the um, variables, the x, value, the x values the, or the x terms are to powers um, which are not in third form and they're all in the numerator. So we can just go ahead and differentiate so five, we multiply by the power and subtract from the power. 5 times 3 is 15. Um, x to the power of 4. 3 times 4 is 12. x to the power of 2. A con uh, an x term just loses the x, so this is going to be minus 1. And uh, the constant terms become 0. So this is dy dx, and we have to find when dy dx is equal to 2. Okay, the gradient of the curve at p and q is 2, so we've got to equate dy dx to 2 and that will help us find the points p and q so we can see that 15 x to the power of 4 plus 12 x squared minus 1 equals 2 um, now what we'll notice here is this is what's called a disguised quadratic okay it's like a, a quartic equation with a x to the power of 4 but we notice that the other term is x to the power of 2 and we know that x to the power of 4 is the same as x to the power of 2 squared so whenever you see something like that this is called a disguised quadratic. So we can actually um, solve this. So first of all, let's just call this, let's first of all um, get it ready by making equating it to zero. So we're going to subtract two from both sides. 15x to the power of four plus 12x squared minus three equals zero. And what we can do to make life a bit simpler, we can say let some not letter equal x squared. So let's b equal x squared, for example. So this will be 12 b squared minus 3 equals 0 and this will be now uh, sorry 12 b minus 3 equals 0 okay because b is equal to x squared so x to the power 4 will therefore be b squared b squared is x to the power 4 so i can replace x to the power 4 with b squared so i have 15 b squared 12 plus 12 b minus uh, 3 is equal to 0 now this is something that we can solve it's like a what we recognize as a quadratic we can even make life a bit easier for ourselves. We can divide each of the terms by 3. All of them are divisible by 3. So this will become 5b squared plus 4b minus 1 equals 0. And that's something that can factorize. Um, we can't really put it. We could. We, I'm guess. I'm guess we could straight put it into straight uh, straight away into two brackets. But generally, something like this, where you have a number in front of the squared term. You know, either you split the middle term, okay, or you do some sort of guessing and checking. You can't just, uh, you know, find two numbers that multiply to give you this and that. You have to split this in a different way. Find two numbers that multiply to give you minus 5a times c and add to give you 4. Now, I like to use my little grid method, which is very similar to splitting the middle term, but it's like a visual way. So what I do is I say, okay, I write 5b squared over here in this corner and minus 1 in the bottom right. And then I find two, I know that these two numbers will give me the same product as those two numbers. So the product has to be minus 5b squared. And the sum of those two, those two numbers here must be the same as this. The sum has to be plus 4b. So I know they have to have different signs. So one is positive and one is negative. 
and they have to multiply to give me 5 and add to give me 4, so it must be plus 5b and minus b. Those multiply to give me minus 5b squared and add to give me 4b. And then I can take out the common factor, for example, from here and here. The common factor is b. b times 5, so b times this gives me 5b squared, so that must be 5b. And b times this gives me minus b, that must be minus 1. And 5b times this, okay, 5b, which is like this length, times this length gives me 5b, that must be plus 1. So we end up with 5b minus 1 and b plus 1 equals 0. So we can say b is equal to 1 over 5 and b is equal to negative 1. Okay, so we know that um, x squared is equal to b. So this is like x squared is equal to 1 fifth and x squared is equal to minus 1. Right now, if x squared equals one fifth, then x is equal to the square root of one fifth. But there's remember when you take the square root of a number, there's a positive or negative possibility, so it's plus or minus one over five. And if x squared equals minus one, well, this is there's no solution for that, that's undefined. Okay, you can't have um, x squared being a negative number. If you take the square root of a negative number, it's undefined. Okay, you will end up with x equals the square root of a negative number, which is undefined. So these are the two values of x. So x is equal to plus or minus root 1 over 5. Now, this would give me plus or minus 1 over root 5, which is not really in its simplest form. So it's always best to write it in simplest form. When you have something in third form and the denominator is irrational, you should rationalize the denominator. You should always do that. So if you multiply this by root 5, in the denominator, you must multiply the numerator also by root 5. That gives us plus or minus root 5 over 5. That's the best way to express the answer. So you can say the coordinates of P and Q are root 5 over 5. And X equals negative root 5 over 5. Those are the two solutions, or those two values of P and Q. They didn't tell us which one is which, which is a positive or negative one. So we can just leave our answers like this. These are the two answers, the x coordinates of P and Q. Okay, so that question is um, solved. Okay, so this gives us a disguised quadratic, and this is the technique we use to, to, to deal with it. You can see that one term is the square of the other, so you can write it in terms of another letter if you want, and that just makes it a bit more familiar. Okay, so there's the answer to this question. Don't forget the positive and negative square roots when you are taking the square root of something and um, yeah that's very important okay so there's answer other questions from this paper of October 2021 from P1 can be found on the link that you'll find appearing at the end of this video in this area other questions from differentiation you'll find in this link over here and I'll also put um, a link here for in, in terms of um, the questions about quadratics and this, this will be under quadratics this is like a kind of disguised quadratic type of question as well and um, thank you for watching um, other questions um, from this paper as I said can be found in the playlist which will appear at the bottom or in the description of this video okay you'll find the, the you'll find um, a link to the playlist there also and that's where you'll also find the PDF version of this paper for you to do. Um, uh, thank you for watching. See you soon.